opinion when it comes to uh, how the NCAA can try to put the genie back in the bottle, which is going to be nearly and next to impossible. And even yesterday we discussed Ross Dellinger had the story about whether well, they're going to try to do this. It's like, oh, man, this is – well, it, it's it's out. I mean, the, the, the dam has broken. But Brian Fisher, uh, NCAA Division I counsel, will discuss and likely vote in two weeks – to waive the 25-man counter limit in football. Notably, this is a waiver, and its current form will be just for the next two years. Coaches will be able to go above 25-32 limit as soon as the end of the month. Council will also discuss recent changes to allow conferences to determine conference title game teams. Big 12 is for it with more than 14 teams. Pac-12 has discussed schedule changes, of course, to get the top two teams to play instead of a division split. So there's there's all sorts. A lot of people are in, in, in Phoenix. Everybody basically, ADs, president, not presidents, uh, ADs, coaches, a, a lot of different people are in Phoenix right now. Max Olson today. Back on February the 1st, I wrote that we are on pace for 2,000 scholarship college football players and 3,000 total players entering the portal in a 12-month period. Post-update, 1,991 scholarship players and 2,883 total have entered the transfer portal in college football in the last nine months. Well, I mean, uh, it is what it is. Uh, I'm not even going to complain about it or whatever. I mean, it's, there's no point in doing that, and I don't even really care at this stage how many people are in the portal. Um, you know, I've made my opinions known, and my general opinion on NIL just very quickly is, is this. I'm all for the players and, and all that getting paid, but like I said yesterday, I just hope this doesn't zap the entire soul out of college football just in terms of – uh, you know, the the non-money side of it and what it does mean for communities and what it does mean for people. That's my only drawback to any of this is just seeing, you know, the potential of, of you know, certain programs or uh, fan bases whittle away because they're caught up in the madness of NIL or feel that they can't compete or feel that it's not fun anymore, you know, because they're not a fan of Texas or USC who's in the mix for everybody. Like I just saw, and, you know, you can't believe everything on Twitter. People do for some reason, but you really shouldn't. Um, so I don't know if this is true or not, but I did see on the way over here that, you know, Texas is in the mix for Jordan Addison, which is a whole nother question of why they would even need him with what they already have. But, you know, hey, Texas fans can at least, whether it's a rumor or fact or not, can get in the buzz and be excited about it. But, you know, um, there's only, it's, it's pretty much the same schools. It's, it's Texas and USC and Miami and Alabama yeah. and, and all those, and that's fine. But my whole thing is, hey, have fun, get your money, go after these guys, go get who you can. But I just, I just hope when it's all said and done that we don't just zap the soul of college football in, in terms of just the, the feeling that it gives us and why we're all fans to begin with. Well, you know, one of the things I'm, I'm kind of, it's going to, NIL is going to negate, and you just mentioned scholarship limits kind of going up a little bit, Smokey for a couple of years and who knows you know if, one of the reasons kansas had like a roster of 40 yeah and so they could only sign 25 or whatever it is and it's taken them like two or three classes baylor had to deal with that a little bit when a rule arrived if you remember in 2017 but they had 63 or whatever the 85 scholarship limit came about for two reasons one of them was obviously title nine and the ability to match scholarships across you know, sports so that women's participation could increase. The other one was, is that if you were good enough, you know, say that you had every five, you're Alabama in 1967, and you could get every five-star prospect that you wanted in the world. You know, it would have been back then. They didn't have that, but like you could get all the studs. Well, you could also get all the three-star prospects too and make sure that nobody around you got better because you could give them scholarships and stash them. And... NIL kind of maybe like Jordan Addison, like, sure, I'm sure he'll help Texas if he went there, but, you know, are you also maybe some of these, okay, Marius Mims at Georgia, are you just not just playing keep away with him since he's not going to play? Well, that's what they, that's what all the, and again, people look at me and they say old school and that's fine. I'm used to it, but you know, Bear Bryant. Daryl Royal, among others. And guess what? In, in 30 years, you're going to be old school, too. There's nothing unique about you being young at the moment. There's, you know, I'm getting older. I used to be the young guy. Like, your, your turn's coming up, buddy. So enjoy it, you know, while you can for the next 10 years or 20 years or whatever, because that's going to be you. We all go through it if we make it that far. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's no, like – right or wrong here just so long as you're not like firmly in the camp of players don't deserve any money whatsoever i think that's the only group that's really 
just not on track with any of this because that argument's been roasted, toasted, and the ashes have been thrown away. So outside of that, I mean, I'm willing to hear what anybody has to say about, you know, their feelings on it. But well, and, and even those who feel that way, I mean, you could try to give me an argument, but there's really there's absolutely no legitimate argument for them not getting any money. So I, I think that crowd's pretty much, you know, faded out at this stage and, and you know, I don't even know what they're standing on at this point because there's no argument to be made. But, um, you know, there's varying degrees of obviously concern or excitement or whatever. I think it's exciting that it keeps the news cycle going. I mean, we we are easily entertained, but it is fun to see Jordan Addison in the portal randomly. Not if you're a Pitt fan, of course, but uh, it's interesting to see that. It's interesting to see kind of, you know, how these uh, transfers have reshaped certain rosters. But in terms of the, the scholarship limits, I did read that about Kansas. And, I mean, I just don't know... Like so, if they're allowed to sign more players, does that mean they're actually going to be be able to sign all those players, and they will hold on to those players, and they're going to have eighty five? Because if, it, if the problem is getting to eighty five, how is having more scholarships going to help? And I guess it would help because oh well, you can sign more if more guys transfer out. But I think the problem is you need to find out how to keep them in there. Which then again, that turns into that's partially Kansas's problem because they're right. not paying guys enough money, or it's they're not going to be able to do anything about it because they're just never going to be able to well, swing let me, it. Let me read what Andy Staples put down when he was talking about the 25 initial counters, which is in NCAA parlance for a new player. Instead of limiting schools to 25 new players per offseason, schools could bring in as many new players as they want, provided they remain under the maximum of 85 scholarship players. Todd Berry, AFCA president that is located here in Waco, is pitching this to administrators as a player safety issue, and he isn't wrong. This is, again, reading what Staples said. But it just as easily could be pitched as an efficiency rule to ensure scholarships aren't going unused or a competitive equity issue to ensure teams have similar roster sizes. Now, I'm going to read a 